The Location and Transportation Credit category in LEED version 4.1 rewards thoughtful decisions about building location with credits that encourage compact development, alternative transportation, and connection with amenities. This category considers the existing features of the surrounding community and how this infrastructure affects occupants' behavior and environmental performance. I'm Karima Salim, and I work in the Lead Technical Development Department of the U.S. Green Building Council on the Location and Transportation and Sustainable Sites credit categories. We've spent the last several years looking at real lead projects to see what's working well and what can continue to improve. Now we're excited to share the evolution of our design and construction rating systems under LEED version 4.1. Let's walk through what to expect from these credits. LEED system goals explain what LEED aims to achieve. The concepts within the location and transportation credit category touch on many of these goals, especially these four goals. LEED version 4.1 builds on the framework of the existing credits and makes incremental adjustments so that credits are more accessible, more responsive, and maintain LEED's position as a driver of market transformation. Here is the full list of prerequisites and credits in the Location and Transportation credit category in LEED version 4.1 for design and construction. Let's review some of the highlights in LEED version 4.1. In order to remain a leadership standard, several updates needed to be made. First, we recognize that due to rapid growth in the green vehicles market, we needed to focus on electric vehicles specifically. Next, in the reduced parking footprint credit, we updated the reference standard to the fourth edition of the Institute of Transportation Engineers standard to stay current. And finally, we added federal promise zones and qualified opportunity zones to the list of referenced federal standards. Another top priority was to increase the accessibility of LEED Several of the location and transportation credits have been updated with this goal in mind. We made several adjustments to the bicycle facilities credit to make it more approachable. For all projects, we extended the distance to short-term and long-term storage, and we now allow indoor storage as long as it meets the distance requirement. To better accommodate projects with a high occupancy count, we have adopted a lead interpretation about showers into the rating system. This adjusts the number of showers that are realistic for large projects. In recognition of their growing prevalence and impact, we allowed on-site bicycle sharing stations to count for 50% of the long-term and short-term bicycle storage space for all projects. We also have guidance specific to projects with a historical urban context about the definition of a bicycle network. We know that these projects in particular may have a harder time meeting the requirements for the width of bike paths, So we've clarified other ways that projects can still meet the intent of the requirement, such as dedicated bike lanes and frequent intersections. There are a number of ways that we made the reduced parking footprint credit more accessible. First, we removed the different cases, since projects often do not know at this point what other credits they will be able to achieve. This allowed us to simplify the credit and set one threshold of a 30% reduction in parking for all projects. We're particularly excited to announce that we've removed the carpool preferred parking requirement. We realize that projects know their spaces best and can determine whether this strategy is a good fit. And we have four new options to meet the requirements of this credit. Overall, our goal was to make this credit more approachable while still honoring its intent. We think this new structure does so. And we plan to continue to work with rural projects to come up with innovative approaches. We also took a hard look at the thresholds in the Access to Quality Transit credit. We've adjusted the threshold for the number of weekend trips and now allow project teams to count whichever weekend day was the highest number of trips rather than an average. As with the reduced parking footprint credit, we've removed the preferred parking and ACEEE score requirements in the electric vehicles credit to make the rating system more flexible. Finally, we've replaced option two with a new option to reward projects for having the infrastructure in place to allow for electric vehicle charging in the future. With all of these updates, we are excited to see the impact that lead projects have on reducing climate change, improving human health, enhancing community quality of life, and so much more through the strategies in the location and transportation credit category.